هذا هو اليوم الذي صنعه الرب فلنفرح ولنتهلل به المسيح قام من بين الأموات وواطئ الموت بالموت ووهب الحياة للذين في القبور المسيح قام من بين الأموات وواطئ الموت بالموت ووهب الحياة للذين في القبور Christos on esti epne kron thanaton, thanaton batisas, keti sentith ni masi zoif karis amenos. Messiah Kham, Christos on esti. Hello everybody, how you doing? Welcome uh, to Big Bang Theory RL. Why don't you have a seat? Sit down for a bit. <laughs> Time to get things started. Because it's Vita 21. And now there are just 19 days left. No, 10 days left. 10 days left of Vita. There about to end. Then nothing happens. <laughs> the Vita title goes away or might not go away. And then uh, <laughs> it's up to you guys. What do you think? Should Vita, uh, after April, Vita be uh, vlogging every day in, uh, vlogging every day anyways, or? <laughs> what do you think? Let me know. Uh, yeah, um, I'm doing more video editing, a lot more video editing now. Uh, I've been doing a lot of cleaning up this week. I decided to sort of put off the news until next week and get a lot of stuff that I need to get done, uh, for the, so I try to get, I try to do improvements on the shows and the amount of work I get done every two weeks. That's the goal, and I'm on schedule for that. And I took I had taken Monday off because it was the uh, this is see again this is something this one needs to be explained. The Greeks don't celebrate and East, Eastern Christians don't celebrate Easter for one day. It's not a one-day thing, and then it's over and gone with. It's there's a lead up to the holiday, and then there uh, in, in, in many cases, and this is true for a lot of the major holidays, even for Christmas. There's a week before, and then there's a week afterwards. So it's a, it, it's it's it, a minimum of, a minimum of 14 day celebration. So. Uh, the news kind of fell off uh, like that, uh, and so I'm going to finish off the week. It's still it's still Easter week for me, uh, for, for most of the Greeks and for most of the Eastern Christians. Uh, it's still uh, it's still uh, Easter week, and after that it'll be Easter month. <laughs> it's, it's that's the way it goes, and for the next 50 days it's it's the the Easter ho Easter holidays or the Easter feast is still you know. Spread out until uh, until Pentecost. If you anyone, anyone knows a Pentecostalist or what a Pentecostalist is, well, that's uh, the ma that's their major day. Uh, fifty days out from uh, just about fifty days out from uh, Easter is uh, is uh, Pentecost, uh, and so uh, that's when officially uh, Easter is over, and the Greeks. Properly, shouldn't it shouldn't be calling it Easter. Easter. Easter is what the Western Christians know it as. The Eastern Christians know it as, particularly from the Greeks, uh, is known as Pascha. That's what it's known as. So, uh, so uh, leaving everything, the, the, the heavier stuff, in terms of putting out the news again, rather than putting out a partial week this week, uh, I'll start again on Monday, and everything will go out from Monday on. And there will be some new features in there. I'm doing. So I, said, I, I always try to do workarounds and um, fix things up. Try out new th new formats. Uh, there's uh, the, the, the news is very raw. And same thing with the economics uh, report. Very raw. It's not um, polished or anything like that. It's still very much because it's within the within this the season zero, uh, the, the the first year uh, that. Um, there's a lot of learning to do, and there's a lot of adjustments to do in order to bring a, a better product out there. So, 
Uh, that's what's being done this weekend. Uh, sources are being proved er, are being improved. Um, the analysis is being approved, and the delivery of the analysis is also going to be improved as well. How we end up, how I end up uh, bringing the, the uh, sources to you. Uh, what else can be said for today? Oh yeah, everything. Everything is being done in Linux. Uh, April, for those of you who are on Ubuntu or not Ubuntu flavor, is uh, the time of year. October and April are the time of year when the new versions come out. But if you look at a lot of the server environments, particularly a lot of the production environments, they, in order to maintain a very stable environment, what they end up doing is they end up, their, their, uh, their cycle is, is very slow. It's either one or two years in order to further upgrades in order to keep a very stable environment. And if you don't have the ability to set out a test lab, and test bench your software before putting into production. Then my, I don't have this. I don't have this capacity yet. I've added the capacity to the network to do this. My network now has the capacity to do uh, test benching. But uh, at this point in time, I don't have enough systems. Uh, I'm still refurbishing them. I have a number of systems on my on my electronics bench that I'm refurbishing. Uh, and when that's done, then I'll be putting uh, Linux at the uh, Linux test, test bench together uh, to actually get this done. Uh, beyond that, uh, uh, my solution is uh, to wait till uh, the the uh, the operating system matures in the environment. There's a, there's a there's a path of mature uh, of of maturing where they work out a lot of the bugs. And that's usually so. If, if 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 it comes out in April, my rule of thumb is I don't uh, install any time before June. So June is June July is my install time, and then uh, typically uh, when October's uh, when uh, October's uh, October's YouTube uh, 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 no Ubuntu comes out, I then. Um, wait until December, January. So basically, um, several months off. And usually around that time, enough of the kinks have been worked out and enough of the bugs have been worked out that uh, uh, the installation doesn't, re it doesn't really propose much of a problem. But at the same time, this ha needs to be said, is that almost invariably, something will go wrong in the upgrade and you'll have to do a complete brand new install uh, and so because of this and you because because you're working in, in a production environment if you don't have a proper uh, backup system in place then this isn't the way to do it the way to you would do it is uh, have and this is how you could could without using a test bench uh, sort of upgrade your network is you have one computer left off the main system so I'll give an example is that let's say you, uh, you have 10 computers in your uh, network you would have an 11th computer that would be the upgrade the initial upgrade to uh, uh, to Ubuntu or Kubuntu whatever I'm on the Kubuntu platform uh, whatever your choice is uh, then what you do is once 11 is working properly and you've got it to the point where it's mirroring mirroring one of your systems, you swap it out and you keep doing. You keep sw uh, you, you swap out the system, right? You, you swap out the, the system that you've test benched and everything. And you put the the new one in there. It's got all the stuff mirrored on it, all the software on there, done up all, all, all properly. Make make sure everything's working. Out. Pull one system out. Put the the, the upgrades the, the upgraded system in. Now that system you pulled out is not upgraded. Upgrade it, uh, right? Make sure that's done properly. Put it back in the system, and then repeat the same thing until all ten systems are upgraded. 
And that way you can go through uh, the entire upgrade process with a minimal loss and a minimal uh, amount of incidences. That's, so that's a way, a way to sort of protect your production environment to, uh, it, it's basically repairing and upgrading, dealing with the technical issues on the fly uh, without slowing down or stopping production. And if you're a tech person like I am, or, 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 or I'm actually not just a tech person, I'm a computer scientist as well as physicist, uh, my, and that's why Cyborg Alpha is Cyborg Alpha. Cyborg Alpha is my virtual presence on the internet. And the cyborg that I'm developing will come out through Cyborg Alpha. So uh, that's where that comes in. And basically what you're doing, what, what you're watching as you're watching Big Bang Theory RL, is you're watching uh, the development in Linux through cyborgs and cybernetics. Uh, you're watching that development as it occurs uh, in real time. Uh, and you'll see the results as it comes out. Uh, I, 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 if people want more of a news type of thing, and this is, uh, I looked at it, and there are large chunks of news programs out there, but the amount of news that's coming out for uh, robotics and um, cybernetics and uh, cyborgs uh, is not enough to really sort of say uh, you can do something weekly. Uh, I looked at like uh, I looked at uh, that Jupiter Broadcasting casting has a, a number of very good Linux shows, and along, along those lines, but the review shows and a lot of the review show. If you look at it, th there's a lot of fear in it because it's really not enough to do a weekly show on. Do have it on one specific thing. So, uh, given the nature of the environment. And because if you're doing a Linux development show, uh, the m means and path you go on development is, is, is sometimes you're doing a lot of work and sometimes you're not doing a lot of work. There isn't a steady amount of information that you can be putting out there on a regular basis for a show. So it c uh, when it comes up and when, it is, when it's in here, uh, when it comes up and there's enough information, simply slip it into one of the Big Bang Theory or Comments X. And this will be uh, uh, in the show here. Uh, all the other research that I'm doing, doing that I'm doing will come up here first, and then be pushed out to the, the various different channels. And that's what you could take a look at. Uh, as f uh, Google is fixing up uh, YouTube, they're changing a, a, changing a, a lot of the uh, UI of the user interface uh, to its new uh, to match its new uh, Google Plus platform. There are a number of kinks that you have to work around. Uh, like one of the things I notice is that uh, it really messes up the uh, the uh, playlist. It's clicking on the playlist doesn't do what you think it's going to do. So you've got to sort of play around with it and develop a protocol, particularly if you're using YouTube to bring out your 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 work uh, and you're more serious about this. Uh, always have your stuff backed up. As, you know. Or if you don't mind losing the stuff, then that's not an issue. I mean, sometimes you, there, there's no, there, as much as you want to back up, in many cases, there's just simply too much to back up. And you need to be prepared for some loss of data. So uh, 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 it, at some point in time, loss of data is inevitable. If you can minimize that, that's sort of the best, best route to go down. Uh, but uh, this is the um, the Linux and the uh, cyborg part of it, uh, and this is where we're going to be doing more week work this weekend. Clean I'm doing a lot of cleaning up. Uh, I will be starting a new filming schedule on Monday. This is not just simply for the news and for the economics, but uh, I'll be bringing out several new videos as. Uh, my video processing gets better. I've got some more ideas I want to bring out. These are particularly for the university, uh, for the UEP, the Undergraduate Education Program. Um, I'm going to be bringing out some uh, tutorial programs uh, sometime in the week. Uh, they're going to be short 10-minute pro uh, programs. Uh, good going to continue with uh, Adventures in the Library. We're now getting into uh, studying uh, 
nucleic uh, nucleic acids and nucleotides, that's DNA and RNA, and that whole family there. And as I mentioned in the uh, uh, in this last segment I did, is that this is where we're going to start getting into uh, the sort of the nitty gritty things of the things. Really, uh, there's going to be a lot more content put out uh, in this show and there will be a number of choices where we can take the program and because this is, this is what happens a lot of times when you're studying something you don't necessarily understand how initially things are related but as you go along you look at your definitions you do your studying and you're finding your bits and pieces you're building the puzzle you find out that things that you thought weren't connected Okay, I mean, and the thing is, we, I started off with the common refrain, a common insult, uh, the common insult that's used by a lot of people, moron. So I went, and I have these old dictionaries and these old, old uh, science encyclopedias. Uh, they're pre-1960. They range uh, from 1930 to 1960 in terms of, uh, of the content. Uh, I don't know how much editing has been done uh, on the later side of things. There seems to be large gaps in here. But anyways, it, it is good enough to give you a sense of what the scientific thought was, what the common thought was back then. Dictionaries give you a view of common thought when the dictionary is written. So it's not simply a matter of getting a brand new dictionary and having the words in there and his, the history of the words. You want to get the mindset of the people at the time. And if you want to do that, then you need... a you need to go find old dictionaries uh, that represent the time frame that you're interested in. And because the book is old, it hasn't been changed, it hasn't been adjusted, it hasn't been abridged, and you can see, you can use that dictionary, that book, as a snapshot of the thought processes or the, 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 the thinking of the day. And that's sort of what we've done here. We're doing it from this perspective. We're looking at the term moron. We found out the term moron wasn't simply a commonly used term, in term that was thrown around, that it was something more significant. Uh, and that it had relations to a, a, a medical and psychological uh, deficiency uh, that when people were, were, were labeled as morons, and this, this was done officially, uh, it had a major effect on their lives. Uh, a moron and people who were feebly minded, and this uh, ironically included women. One of the reasons why women's, uh, uh, the women's movement ha had an issue with uh, uh, the main society at the time it was that it was believed that women were feeble minded, and many, so, uh, there are many groups that who still feel this way today, and that they needed to be taken care of and at this time, at this point in time, in, in, when we're looking at the stuff in the dictionaries, this was the case. And none of the, in, the, it wasn't the case that, that this was the, the convention. This was the law. Morons could not live on their own. And the same thing with the feeble mind. They needed someone to take care of them. And this is actually where a lot of socialism came in. And this is sort of another path you can go on. And we will follow that path in, in the in the uh, in the uh, in the uh, Adventures in the library. This is where socialism came in. Socialism came in as a means to deal with the uh, impoverished masses, and it was the view that the impoverished masses were morons by the, the definition, feebly minded. It needed to be guided and directed. In other words, they needed somebody to take care of them. And this somebody, this overarching uh, character, which was supposed, which was painted by the socialists and the people who wrote about socialism as a benevolent figure, and in Orwell he he named the uh, figure Big Brother, and this is where you get the you get the references to the nanny state. The nanny state reference is in is an an Orwellian state an Orwellian statement uh, along the lines of Big Brother. And this is where you get a lot of the tiffing back and forth because a lot of the socialists, modern socialists today, 
really don't know their history of where socialism came from. If they did, they wouldn't be socialists. And this is where the irony comes in, as you're watching some of the, Most of the socialists have no idea, have really no uh, understanding of what, of what the socialist history has been and the, and the horrors behind it. So, as you know, socialism uh, and the those who say we want to, uh, you know, if if we could only get rid of religions in society, think the world would be a better place. Well, no, it won't, because that's already been done, and it produced Hitler and Stalin. I mean, it, it, all you have to do is go back and look at history and see what occurred. And I'm not talking about textbook history. I'm talking about really doing the research. Things you learn in textbook all the way up into um, your bachelor's degree. A lot of the material is prepared for you from a particular point of view. It's designed to push you and in, in, in direct you into a particular direction of thought. And it's not necessarily the truth. What you're reading as an undergrad, this is what you can read even as an undergrad, you're not seeing the whole thing. You're only seeing part of the picture. And this, these, the part of the picture that you're seeing is what is directed to you and given to you by your professor and your teacher. And their thoughts and their points of view will taint and color this point of view. So you're not seeing an independent point of view. You're not seeing something that is... Uh, uh, really objective. You're getting sort of you're getting something something that's in bits and pieces and created for you. And this is something you need to understand that if you're an undergraduate, if you finish your even if you finish, finish even even if you finish your bachelor, if you haven't gone on to an independent study to independently research or something, that means getting into the library and really doing the searches. And I said if you want to understand this uh, about library research and library science and what you need to be doing, and the thing is. To do library science and do library research, you do not need a fancy school. You do not have to pay any money at all. All you need to do is get yourself into the library and then s simply follow the methods and techniques that uh, you'll see in Adventures in the Library. And this is the whole point of Adventures in the Library. You're looking for hidden information. You're looking for information that society and these teachers and these professors have hidden from you. And they have hidden stuff from you. There's an enormous amount that is hidden from the average person, including on the news. There's an enormous amount that's hidden and unseen that if you went into the library and actually found out what was going on and what actually happened, you'd realize how much has been removed and cleansed from society. Even today, when we consider ourselves to be the most open-minded society ever, and we have all these internet resources, uh, we are still uh, enormously closed-minded. Our, our, our eyes, in terms of our understanding, are almost blind. We only see what is put in front of us. And that's the current state of the average person. And that's the state of the average person who, if you only have your bachelor's degree, you haven't opened your mind up here. You've only stepped into the introduction part of things. You don't finish and don't. Well, hey, there is no real finishing. This is, I had. A, I'm, I was supposed to go to uh, a YouTube gathering in Toronto, but I had. I have too much studying to do. I can't leave my. I can't I mean, leave my. Uh, my labs in my library, and I've, I've got too much studying to because I found new stuff that I have to go check out. And this is what your life is. If you if you're a, up on on the professor level, if you're up on the researcher level, like I am, I'm past my not even past my PhD and past my postdoc. Uh, then your life is uh, basically one massive project. It's like for the kids, for for the people who are still in school. I don't. I don't mean kids in a derogatory. Kids are I, I view kids to be well my peer group. Kids and tweens are my peer group because they're the ones still doing projects in school. And if you know what it's like to go and do a project in school, uh, to go into the library, find your books, and 
then from there we can find your materials and, and, and write a little do a little project on it. Well, that's what re a researcher. If you're a researcher, that's what your life is like. Particularly if you're in open exploration, and that's what I'm in. I'm in open exploit. I'm a, I'm I'm an open explorer, where my research is to explore the universe, uh, and the perspective comes from uh, quantum physics, astrophysics. Uh, and then spreads from there on out into computer science, to medicine, and basically the ultimate physicist where you can, from the point of view of physics, uh, reach any point uh, around you. Or should not, any point of, uh, any, any point or area of study, f uh, you can do that right from, the, from the, the pinnacle of physics. And this is the Sheldon Cooper model in terms of or the view of uh, of how uh, physics works, that physics should be overarching, it should be uh, encompassing uh, the entirety of science and uh, thought. Well, because it's supposed to, na the, the, the physics itself by its very nature, uh, and, <laughs> and physics does mean nature, it's Greek for nature, uh, that's what you're supposed to be doing. You, you, the only limitations is uh, you're, the only thing that limits you is yourself. The more you can do, the, and, and the more you can sort of remove your ego, the more you can sort of see out, you can really have, you can develop your understanding a lot better. Anyways, uh, I'm going to get back to work now. Uh, I've got to do a lot, of, I'm going to do a lot of cleaning, a lot of organizing, and then I've got some more, uh, i got some more uh, uh, leads to check out. Hey, take it easy. Free speech rules here at Democratic Earth.